It's a big, exciting Materion world. From the cell phones in your hand to the satellites orbiting the Earth, we are all around you. Come inside Materion to meet the people and hear the stories about how we bring it all to life every single day. Join us as we talk to our subject matter experts about topics and trends that are truly changing the world. Despite the challenges we have all experienced in 2020, NASA has given us a new hope stunning the world yet again by landing a new rover on Mars. On February 18th, this new rover, known as Perseverance, landed in Jericho Crater and has given the world a front row seat to collecting rock samples and looking for life on Mars. Perseverance is equipped with 23 cameras, two robotic arms, and 40 sample tubes ready to collect Martian microbes. Hello and welcome to Materion's first podcast called Minds Over Materials. And during this episode, you'll meet the minds inside Materion as we explore topics relating to our advanced materials and technologies. I am host, Melissa Mall, and today's topic is Materion on Mars. For the first time, we're telling Materion's story on how we contributed to this newest rover. And joining me today are four guests from all different Materion facilities located around the world, each excited to tell their own stories on how they contributed to this latest mission. David Harrison is Business Development Manager for Materion Precision Optics, located in Westford, Massachusetts. Thomas Weber is a leader of Materion Balzer's Optics Space Team, located in Jena, Germany. Aidan Durek is a Product Manager from Advanced Materials, located in Limerick, Ireland. And finally, Keith Smith, Vice President, Nuclear Science and Government Affairs from Materion Performance Alloys and Composites, located in Elmore, Ohio. Let us get started by discussing Materion's precision optics materials on how they've contributed to perseverance. Dave, let's start with you. For this mission, Materion provided bandpass filters, which are key component to the Rover Mastercam Z camera system. Can you describe why these filters are important and how they work? Uh, sure, Melissa. So, so Mastercam Z is a multispectral imaging system, and, and basically the primary uh, science camera on Perseverance. Uh, it, its function really as the Rover's main eyes. Um, it has two separate filter wheels, which employ optical filters manufactured by Materion. Each wheel has eight um, distinct uh, filters ranging in wavelength from around 440 nanometers all the way up to just over one micron. Now, what those filters do is to separate out different wavelengths of light that allow the camera's detector system to see more like a human eye in, in sort of RGB type colors. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that the camera has on the Martian surface is to sort out all the bright red colors so that it can provide those, those high definition images that we've all come to marvel at. So Materion's filters are a key component in this capability. Uh, additionally, there, there's two neutral density filters, in one in each eye, that allow the camera to look directly at the sun for imaging purposes which it does that for, for to sort of um, do a detailed study of the Martian atmosphere. So, so there's a wide range of things that, that the filters contribute to, 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 to allow uh, the rover or perseverance, if you will, to, to see what's going on both in the ground and in the sky above. Oh my gosh, that sounds so fascinating, thank you. Transitioning over to our Optics Bowser team, I understand there are other key components that were built into the Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer, known as MEDA instrument. Thomas, can you tell us what components your team created for Perseverance and what their purpose is? Um, Optics Bowser has manufactured in 2016 a set of bandpass filters in the UV and visible spectral range for the so-called uh, RDS, radiation and dust sensor, which is part of the yeah, weather station of the Mars rover. These filters are quite small, six by six millimeters, and they are mounted directly on top of photodiodes uh, located on the deck of the rover, and they are looking into the sky 
measuring uh, size and properties of dust particles, um, aerosols, and they are also measuring the annual cycles of UV and uh, this radiation. Um, yeah, these are the main properties um, of these filters. So they are fewer ones than um, delivered by Dave and his team, um, but they are um, sending weather data directly from the Martian surface. Wow, outstanding, thank you. Aiden, what exciting products from advanced materials business were on the mission to Mars? Hi, Melissa. Uh, we made a whole range of products from our hermetic packaging and uh, solar sealing components on board. Um, I suppose most notably was our, some of our combo lid covers and they're used to protect critical, mission critical um, electronic assemblies. So these um, components are experiencing very extremes of uh, temperatures and harsh environments on their way to Mars. So it's, in, it's uh, highly important that they don't fail. And that's what our combo lid covers do. They make sure that they don't fail. Um, and indeed, after they arrive, it's important that they stay operational and uh, don't fail for the lifetime that the rover will be on the surface of Mars. Um, obviously, you can perform maintenance. You can swap out components once the devices are in place. And that's what our ultra high reliability uh, products do, is they keep those devices safe um, for the entire lifetime of the program. Wonderful. Thank you, Aiden. Taking a look at our performance alloys and composites, our Albumet composites were on board as well, helping with this exploration. Keith, why was Albumet components chosen for use on Perseverance? Well, hello, Melissa. Yes, let me talk a little bit about Albumet. Albumet is an aluminum and beryllium metal matrix composite. Um, has extremely lightweight, it's very stiff, and um, when you look at it, it's high specific stiffness, three times as high as aluminum and 70% greater than titanium. So it's an excellent material that's thermally stable and very lightweight. And it also dampens vibration very well. So for the Mars rover that's landed on Mars, what Albumet provides is an extremely lightweight material, lighter than aluminum, so that we can take weight out of the structure for critical structural components. And I will mention one thing about Albumet. This is not the first time Albumet or Materion has been on Mars. Albumet was used on critical components on the Curiosity, Spirit, and Opportunity landers back in the early 2000s. So, you know, we're just visiting one more time. Wow, that is fantastic. It's certainly clear to me that Materion has supported space exploration products and aerospace missions for many years, and the spirit of innovation keeps driving us today. So Aiden, back to you. Can you tell us more about space projects advanced materials have been involved with for the past few years? Um, so Materion has been producing combinate covers for over 40 years, so we've been involved in all the NASA space programs in that time. Um, it's really exciting to see these devices that we work so hard to produce being used in such an interesting application. Um, in more recent years, we've developed a, a, a range of VisiLid covers, which offer all of the same protection that the combo lid covers offer, but also allow optical signals in and out of devices. So that allows uh, optical communication to happen um, um, as needed. Um, but also in the wider uh, material and advanced materials family, we've also uh, been heavily involved in the space programs through the space shuttle program since it started. And uh, we provide a wide range of materials that help to protect the, uh, the, the um, space shuttle from the severe temperatures that it experiences on re-entry. So uh, we have a lot of experience with the types of requirements of these uh, space programs. Oh my goodness, it certainly sounds like it, and thank you. How about you, Thomas? Being new to the Materion family, could you please tell us more about the history Optics Bowsers has, has had with past space and astronomy missions? Yes, sure. So um, in our facility in Jena, we are involved in space projects since 2005. Um, so we only manufacture customized coatings so we are open for this uh, yeah, mostly challenging applications. Everything started with a set of bandpass filter arrays for a German Earth observation constellation called Rapid Eye. Um, and yeah, 
with years passing by, um, the space projects grew. Now we have about 20% of our turnover with um, the space business. And um, yeah, before landing on Mars this year, we are observing the Martian surface with um, a filter array since 2016. Um, with the ExoMars mission and beside going to Mars, um, some of our filters or one filter is on its way to Mercury with BP Colombo. Uh, we will quite soon um, take a look at Jupiter with the JUICE mission. Um, we are also have one tiny filter at James Webb that they know, know that uh, other parts of Materian has uh, larger contributions. We have only a small filter. And then we are all looking to next year when Euclid Space Telescope will be launched by ESA, and we have um, yeah, major, uh, supplied major optical components. So this will be very exciting for us. Um, but our yeah, main topic is still the Earth observation with filter arrays, and we are on board of almost all the Sentinels with optical devices. And um, yes, it's, it's a nice journey that we are really um, very familiar with all the ESA projects. And now with partnering with Materian, maybe we have the possibility to access all the, also the NASA missions, yeah. Oh my goodness, that sounds quite exciting. You must be so yeah. proud. Yes, yeah. but it's a lot of work, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So Dave, would it be safe to say that Materian's precision optics has been involved with Mars exploration for quite some time? Oh, yeah, it's absolutely, Melissa. Uh, it certainly would be. Uh, in fact, nearly every U.S. mission to Mars ha has used some type of material filter or optical coatings. Uh, this goes all the way back to the all the Martian surface missions, you know, on the previous rovers like Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, uh, as well as many of the Mars orbiting missions, um, all the way back to the Mariner and Viking missions in the 70s. Um, the Mars Global Surveyor in the 90s, and Mars Odyssey in 2001. Uh, currently, there are material filters on board of the Mars Reconnaissance, Reconnaissance Orbiter, or MRO. Um, this was launched in 2005. Uh, MRO has actually several payloads that, that use material on filters. Um, one of the more notable being the high-resolution imaging science experiment, or high-rise. So the high rise system is the most powerful camera ever sent to another planet. Um, it's from providing unprecedented images of the Martian surface since 2006. Now, those images not only provide amazing scientific information uh, of Mars, but also have been invaluable in selecting the landing sites for the last two rover missions, as well as providing in mission support to them uh, from above when, when they need to, you know, look through, see what's going on on the surface, look for dust storm, try to find the, the best path to where they want to go. Um, high rise supports all those activities. Oh my gosh. How fascinating. Do you actually get to look at any of those images since your oh. components are part of this program? So, so, uh, yeah, I look at all of the images, a real sort of off, the side of this Mars discussion, but but when we're talking, ask me about images. I was actually in the um, office of the place who images the the initially these things. The very first images that came back from Jupiter, I was actually in the room. So other than the person doing the imaging, I was the first person on the planet to see those images. It was awesome. It oh was my really gosh! Kind of so cool. <laughs> So, yeah, I see them all the time and, and intentionally. Oh, I certainly would as well. That, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. And what an accomplishment. Yeah. Keith, has albumet composite or any other materion materials been used for other space projects? Well, Melissa, yes, they have. We have one group of metal matrix composites called Supremex, which are produced in the UK and also in the United States. Supremex is an aluminum metal matrix composite with micron and submicron ceramic reinforcement. That gives us very high stiffness, great acoustic dampening and weight savings over aluminum titanium. And it's actually an excellent titanium replacement. Most recently with Supremex, we're on the European Space Agency's Copernicus Earth 
observation project and it's, it's used for structures on a laser communication device. Shifting gears to pure beryllium, with pure beryllium, we've been in space since Telstar, Project Mercury, Apollo, the space shuttle, numerous satellites, and as you mentioned earlier, very shortly later this fall is the James Webb Space Telescope. James Webb is a replacement for the Hubble and it's huge. When it's fully deployed, the just the sun shield is the size of a tennis court, if you can imagine. Well, the Webb Telescope has 18 beryllium mirrors. Each beryllium optic is about a meter in size hexagon. In addition, the, uh, the structures and support structures that hold that in place, along with the secondary mirror, mirror the tertiary mirror, and some of the optical bases for the optical, um, or not the optical bases, but the structural bases for the analytical instruments. So we're really excited about that. Why beryllium? Beryllium as an optical substrate is outstanding. Again, for space, it's very lightweight. It's a third the density of aluminum. It's extremely stiff. It's high stiffness, four times that of, of aluminum, three times as stiff as titanium, and it's even stiffer than steel. And yet it's very low density. It's a third lighter than aluminum. So dimensionally stable, great material for an optic. So we're very excited. In particular, we just can't wait for the Webb Telescope to launch late this fall. We've been on that program for about 14 or 15 years. It's to finally see that go will be very exciting. Absolutely, Keith. I can talk from my personal experience with that hiring into the company. I, just looking around the Materion walls and hallways, seeing pictures of everyone's contributions to the James Webb Space Telescope and those mirrors, it's certainly been the pride for Materion Elmore. Well, how gratifying it has been to hear each of your stories and sense the passion you have within our products. As listeners, I hope you enjoyed learning more about Materion and our materials that impact our today tomorrow, and beyond. As we wrap up today's episode, I firmly believe that this mission marks only the beginning of what is yet to come in Materion's exploration to the unknown. Thank you for your time today. Until next time, explore, inspire, deliver, repeat. Goodbye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Be sure to follow Materion on our social media channels, as well as visit our website for more information about our innovative material solutions.